But hello there folks, how are you? It's lovely to see you again. So thank you very much for coming over just to check out this wee recipe and I hope that I find you very well indeed. So as you can see, I've made this amazing chicken balmoral pie. Now this is typically made with a pastry top but we have went with mashed potato because it just goes so well with that creamy chicken stew. You know it's a lovely savoury white sauce made with chicken stock, onion, garlic, rosemary, cream, smoked bacon, a layer of haggis and then a layer of mashed potato as well. You can top this with grated cheese but I think it's just great the way it is. So I'm just going to run you through how I'm making this but as usual all of the ingredients will be underneath the video. So the first thing we're going to do is poach the chicken. I prefer to poach the chicken rather than fry it because it just, you know, it turns out a lot softer and much more tender. To the chicken breast, I'm going to add one onion and one large carrot, which I've just peeled and roughly chopped. A good dash of salt and also a good grinding of black pepper as well. And this is going to be the stock for your sauce at the end. You just want to cover that with cold water and let that come up to the simmer. And you want to simmer this for around an hour until your chicken is lovely and tender. After your hour, you can come back and you just want to lift out your chicken breasts. I've just got a wee bowl there at the side. So just lift all your chicken out and you'll be left with the stock. You want to drain this through a sieve because you just want to be left with the stock. You don't need the vegetables anymore. So just pop that to the side for the time being. And around about this time, you can get your tatties on. So I've just got a large pan there. Those are my potatoes. To that, I'm going to add a wee drop of cold water. Let this get up to the boil. And then you can top that up with some boiling water for your kettle. Because if you try and boil a whole pan of cold water, it takes about an hour to come up to the boil. Let those boil away until they're tender. On another ring, you want to start your sauce. A wee knob of butter in there. To that, I'm going to add this streaky bacon. I'm going to use about half of this pack. Exact measurements, like I said, will be underneath the video. So you just want to fry this on both sides until it goes lovely and crispy. I'm going to get in with my scissors and chop this up into wee bits as well. I use these scissors specifically for meat, so don't panic. I don't use them for anything else. Once it's nice and crispy, just push that out of the way. And this is my haggis here. Now, my haggis doesn't have the tape around the edge, but if yours does, you know, just take that off. You don't want that. And just use the oil from your bacon to fry your haggis. You wouldn't have to add any additional oil. Just like this. And once you're happy, you can lift your bacon out. Once you've extracted the oil from your bacon to fry your haggis, just lift that out and set that to the side as well. And you just want to fry your haggis for a few minutes on each side, just until each side goes lovely and crispy. This doesn't take long at all. And again, just lift this out and set it on the same plate as your bacon. Or you can use a different plate. It's up to you. <laughs> and then you'll be left with a nice empty pan again. This is the beauty of this. It all gets done, you know, in the one pan. So you don't have piles of pans everywhere. Another wee knob of butter. And then I've got an onion there, which I've just diced. And you want to give this a good stir around in the butter and let this soften up for about five minutes. To that, add a wee dash of salt. This is going to help your onion sweat down and yeah, cook a wee bit quicker. But like I said, do give that about five minutes to soften up a good bit before you add in your garlic and other bits. So I was happy with this. I'm going to pop in my garlic. This is three sliced garlic cloves. You can mince your garlic if you prefer. I like the wee slices. Give that a wee stir around and then you can add in your rosemary. This is fresh rosemary, which I've just chopped. That's about two sprigs. And again, just give that a wee move around. Give it about another five minutes so that the flavours all come out and infuse. To that, I'm going to add some plain flour or all-purpose all flour. You might know it as. So just sprinkle that on top. Give that a good stir through. And you want to cook this for a couple of minutes just to get rid of that dry flour flavour. And then to that, we're going to add the chicken stock. I'm going to add it in two stages. Use a whisk just to make sure you're breaking down all of the lumps. The only lumps that should be in there are the lumps of onion. You know, this should be lovely and smooth. So I've popped in my first half and I'm just going in with my second half now. And again, just whisk this in a medium heat until all of your lumps are gone. It'll only take you a few minutes. And as you can see, it's going lovely 
and thick as well. And like I said, the only lumps that should be in there are the onions. To this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of whole grain mustard and then some double cream. If you don't have any double cream, you can use heavy cream as well. Give that a good stir through until it's nicely combined and you want to let this sitting on a very low simmer for about five, five, six, seven minutes and it will thicken up a good bit. You don't want it too thick though, you do want this nice and saucy. So I was really happy with this. Next we're going to add the bacon back in and as you can see it is lovely and crispy. It isn't all that limp soggy way which I don't like. You don't want it nice and crispy so just stir that through and then we're going to stir the chicken through as well i've just cut mine into chunks you can shred this if you like you know do what you like with it i wanted chunky chicken and you just want to sort of fold your sauce through the chicken just so that it doesn't break up too much because it's very very soft and tender just because it's been poached and that's you done now you can turn your attention to your potatoes and these should be lovely and soft by now. So just drain out your water and I like to pop a wee bit of milk and butter or cream and butter. Sometimes I use cream but because the sauce is so creamy I'm just going to use milk this time. So you just want to mash these until they are lovely and smooth and as you can see they are lovely and lump free. You want these quite loose because you want to be able to spread your potato on top of your mixture. You don't want them too dry because it would be quite difficult that way and plus it spins them out a wee bit more as well. Pop on a layer of your haggis and then a layer of your mashed potato and like I said you can top this with a layer of grated cheese as well but I thought that would be overkill because it is very creamy already so I just left it plain. So pop this into your oven until it goes lovely and golden on top and it'll be ready when it's all bubbly around the side. So you can just eyeball this yourself and this was it here just fresh from the oven. My mouth is absolutely watering because this was absolutely delicious and this is it here on the plate and you can see all of those lovely ingredients there. And We just had some broccoli on the side. This is just the broccoli tips which I've steamed and it just went beautiful together. So yeah, highly recommend you give that one a go. If you do like these kinds of creamy potato chickeny type things and do let me know if you end up making it because so many of you send me your pictures now over on Instagram and I love to see them. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you off as soon back here on What's For Tea and just before I go a huge thank you as usual to the supporters of the channel over my Patreon page, to the channel members here on YouTube as well and for you all for leaving your lovely comments and for those that share the videos as well and I will catch up with you during the week for another wee recipe back on Sunday for meals of the week or back on Saturday for a wee shopping unbagging so you take care of yourselves and bye for now. Bye now.